Hello everyone. The following presentation will be on the continuation of the previous uh, lecture on inflammatory mediators. Uh, and uh, the previous presentation was focusing on inflammatory mediators which were derived from the local sources, which is cellular sources. And the present presentation is on the inflammatory mediators derived from systemic factors. So the systemic mediators of the inflammation. Now, the systemic uh, factors of inflammation and the local factors of inflammation. This is the chart which shows you the local mediators, which I would repeat, were derived from preformed mediators or newly synthesized mediators from the cells and most commonly uh, involved cells in producing these mediators were mast cells, platelets and leukocytes, especially neutrophils. The systemic mediators of inflammation is produced from liver and in liver you have got various systemic mediators and more or less all of them were uh, synthesized and all of them were stimulated and activated by a factor called as Hagman factor which is factor 12 of the clotting system. This factor 12 is responsible for stimulating the coagulation pathway, the fibrinolysis pathway, the kinin pathway and the complement activation system also. The plasma proteases or the enzymes which are produced and uh, which have the effects on inflammation are three interrelated plasma derived factors which are clotting factors, complement factors and kinins. And all these three systems are linked by an initial activation of Hagman factor, which is factor number 12. Factor 12 is a protein which is synthesized by liver, circulates in an inactive form until it encounters collagen or its basement membrane or activated platelets at the site of endothelial injury. So fa factor number 12 is there in your circulation but gets activated when it gets accumulated at the site of injury or collagen or membrane or by high molecular weight protein HMWK. With the assistance of high molecular weight kinenogen, which I was saying you, high molecular weight kinenogen HMWK cofactor, factor 12 gets a conformational changes to become factor 12A, which is an activation factor of Hickman. Now, this shows you the interrelationship between the four plasma mediated systems which are all triggered by the activation of factor 12. So, at the beginning of the flow chart, you can see factor 12 and that gets accumulated, uh, that gets stimulated by collagen, basement membranes, platelets or HMWK and forms factor 12. Factor 12 initiates the clotting cascade by activating 11, 10 and then prothrombin to thrombin and then you know what thrombin does. It indirectly also stimulates fibrinogen to fibrin, which is also the beginning of the fibrinolytic system. The factor 12 also converts pre calicrine to calicrine, and calicrine converts and forms bradykinin. The same calicrine can also convert plasminogen to plasmin, and which overall stimulates the complement cascades and leads to the complement activation factor C3A. So, this is all, all the four have been interrelated and interstimulated by factor number 12a. This is very well described in the classic landmark book on pathology by Robbins. The complement system is the central component of the inflammation and it's an interrelation or interacting network of the 30 membrane associated cell receptors and a soluble serum glycoprotein. This is present in the inactive form in the plasma and then this complement system gets activated by various activation systems. You have got two classic pathways, you have got two pathways of complement system. One is classic pathway and one is alternate pathway. If you notice that the classic pathway and the alternate pathway are basically delineated or differentiated by the method or mode of activation. The antigen antibody complex begins the classic pathway whereas the direct lipopolysaccharide of the microbial surface or an endotoxin of a bacteria stimulates the alternate pathway or an alternative pathway. 
indirectly or directly both of them will lead to activation of a very important or formation of an enzyme called as c3 convertase c3 convertase is formed in both the pathways if you notice that and which is actually formed from the fusion of c1 so c1 even when you look into classic pathway you see c1 c1 is a first complement protein c1 is a complement protein number one which gets activated which has got three component subunits c1q c1r and c1s which you will see in a further slide that gets activated and helps to convert c4 and c2 c4 and c2 so c4 again has got two components c4a c4b c2 also has two components c2a c2b so c4b and c2a form c3 convertase in this c3 convertase converts c3 into two components C3A and C3B, the very, very important aspect of it. C3A is none other than most important component, anaphylotoxin. Similarly, this C3A convertase will also help and fuse the C3B component, which is actually an opsonin, to form C5 convertase, which will again stimulate C5 to form C5A and C5B. This C5A again becomes an anaphylotoxin along with C3A. So like C3A, even C5A, both of them are called as anaphylotoxins, which are the origin, the beginners of anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis means you know very well, it's leading to vasodilatation, permeability of the bronchomucosa and a lot of other issues with anaphylotoxins because they basically stimulate the anaphylaxis from mast cell mediated reaction. C3B is an opsonin and C5B fuses with the other C6, C7, C8, C9 and forms a huge macro particle size molecule called as a membrane attack complex which attacks the, the foreign body and leads to the destruction. Similarly, in alternate pathway, what happens is the direct microbial surface will directly go, fuses, form C3 convertase and uh, with then again it goes to the C5 convertase, the mechanism is same, but only the mode of activation is different, which we have to understand. It is also called as the properidin pathway. This is a flow chart. You can see C1Q, how it forms, C1QRS, then how this is how it forms. And the classic pathway animated video, which shows you how C1 activates, how C4B and 2A, it forms C3A, then forms C5A, and this is how all of them forms a membrane attack complex. This is classic pathway. Alternate pathway, directly C3 will come and directly C3A convertase will form. Then C5B will fuse, C5 convertase will form and membrane attack complex. So you can see that the initial half of both classic and alternate is different, but the later half is almost similar because formation of the membrane attack complex is by the fusion of C5B with C6789 and attacks the cell wall. So as I said, in a nutshell, the C3A, C5A are anaphylotoxins and then C5A is considered sometimes also as a chemotaxin because it causes the chemotaxis and activation leukosideration. C3B is a very popular component responsible for opsonin. So opsonin, you would have heard of opsonization, which is the prior important step for phagocytosis. And C5B to C9 is the membrane attack complex. This is very, very important to be considered as the overall effects or inference of why complement has to happen and what are the components and the derivatives and their functions in the plasma cycle and leading to the inflammatory mediation. Then this is the calicrin system. As I said, you have factor 12, factor 12A converts pre-calicrin to calicrin and calicrin basically converts kinenogen to bradykinin and plasminogen to plasmin. Bradykinin is also an inflammatory mediator causing vasodilatation. Then you have got a clotting cascade. As I said, you have got again two pathways. You have an intrinsic pathway and an extrinsic pathway. Again, they fuse similarly like complement into a common pathway. The intrinsic pathway starts from 12, 12A. Same thing what we discussed prior, 11 to 11, 10 to 10A. Act indirectly, it forms 10A. Similarly, extensive pathway directly stimulates when there is a tissue damage. Tissue damage starts from factor number 4 and then forms factor number 10A. Both of them will fuse and both of them will form a common pathway which is activation of factor 10A. 
and 10A again converts with the help of factor 5 into prothrombin to thrombin and thrombin converts fibrinogen to fibrin and fibrin forms a clot. So this is how it forms. So the summary of the clotting cascade is the most important component which has to form is factor 10A without which nothing will happen. In complement system also nothing will happen unless C3 convertase and C5 convertase will form and the most important component is C5B to C9. Similarly, the, all the plasma proteases are fused and interrelated with the most common primary major factor which is Hegman factor, factor 12a. This is how we complete the systemic mediators of inflammation. Thank you so much.